<laughs> Welcome to another exciting episode of the Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Guy. And I'm Mr. Magazine. And it's the Hump Day Happy Hour Salute. And was it just me or did that pop on live a little faster than usual it today? like it did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like rapid fire today. Yeah, not just a shot. No. And uh, today we enjoyed something that Mr. Magazine brought over a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Appleton Estate Rum. So, oh, I just want to make sure we... A little behind the scenes, we had a little bit of a snafu. Uh, we always shoot our uh, studio shows before the live show. And Mr. Magazine went and was moving the microphone because it was down a little bit too low. And it got unplugged. And I wish we had some backstage video of two 50-plus-year-old men. 49. Just turned 49. So I'm like really 48 and 90%. Yes, you're, you're so young. Yes. Um, Two young men like us trying to plug the bottom in. It took much longer than it should have. The, the phone light, but still, it was still not easy going in. And, and then we had a then we had to call a random mm -hmm. neighborhood kid down, and he was in the shower, so he's all mad. So he's coming down and ended up getting making sure it was all working. So that was I was making sure people weren't commenting that there was no sound. Yeah. But why don't you introduce all the people that are here? All right, we got a slew of people today. We got the lovely Lori's first in the house. We got magnificent Michael. Perfect Puddings is in the house. Dynamic Dave, Magnificent Michael, Awesome, awesome Antiquarian, <laughs> Magnificent Merity Benton, Perfect Puddings is still here. <laughs> Perfect Puddings. Uh, marvelous Michelle, Joyous Joy, and Ferocious Feral Girl Vintage, and Joyous Jeff. And I actually stopped by Michelle's uh, whatnot today for a couple of minutes, but she didn't even shop me out. I don't think she saw me in there, mm. but she was selling some really neat, neat little items over there. But then I had to get back to my day job, unfortunately. Um, another little bit behind the scenes over here. So Mr. Magazine never sees this. And you okay. could if you want to. No, I choose not to. Yeah, you to. choose not yeah. to. Um, I'd rather not know. It's what we're talking about on the show tonight in general. And every week, I start panicking because it's about Monday and we've got different topics on here. Your weekly updates, glitch of the week, site changes and so on. And all of a sudden I start panicking because Monday, this was almost completely blank. Really? And I said, we're not going to have anything to talk about this week. Oh, we'll find, we'll find something. Trust me. Guess what? Yeah. It filled up yeah, pretty so rapidly. I'm sure. <laughs> a couple more people have shown up there. Michelle, I see oh, we got uh, dynamic, dynamic Dan Sweeps in the house. They got uh, Joyous John Holmes or Juvial John Jones. I don't know. We're going to blame, blame it on the shot. I can't even talk right now. What was in it? I'm still feeling it in my like midsection here. Uh, we got the uh, new Nova Crow's Nest, which you're probably not really new. And then, uh, Yep, Barbara is in the house and local <laughs> Joe. Not local Barbara is in the house and local Joe is in the house as well. And I blame everything on the shot and uh, stupendous Steven as well. There you go. All righty. So why don't we get started off uh, 15 minutes in like we always do. Um, sales. How are sales? How's everybody's sales out there? I'm, I'm Well, I'm always curious, but I'm curiouser this week how about you i'll go like i always do um sales are good i can't complain ebay is good we're putting some good stuff on amazon i think amazon we're already starting our pre black friday amazon well you know we're last selling more was, stuff every day they did have the prime day is that all? they but had that second prime but day. every day we're we're doing 100 orders a day which is definitely more than we were a year ago at this point so i think the pre black friday is starting a month early instead of a week early um, and we got some good stuff on, so I can't complain. Well, about. I don't want to rain on your parade. Okay. How many items have you listed on Amazon in the last six months? Oh, you're asking me. We have a ton. Yeah, right. That's oh, what yeah, I mean. Ton. So that could we be should be two. We should be selling a yeah, lot of stuff. I was going to say, so you can't yeah. really check your year yeah, on year. But I think, we're, I think we're doing better at this point this year than we were a year ago, regardless mm -hmm. of what we put on. But we're selling some stuff. Um, eBay's doing well. We're putting better stuff on there. So the, the order numbers are down on eBay. We're selling higher ticket items, which is um, good. But the kicker is the website and the DVD site. We are killing it there. And just, it's amazing. You know, we'll sell 50, 100 items a day just not, and multi orders on the website. So it's definitely helping out for sure. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I see some other people that are chiming in their sales. All right. Let's see. We're going to start with, I'm just going to close my eyes and pick this one right here. Weekend was horrible. 
Oh, that's All not right. good. All right. But they've picked up a little bit. Sales are picking up. Yeah, Listing more. Yeah, I think yeah, that makes yeah. a big difference. Yep, sure, definitely yeah. does. Gotcha. Good until yesterday. Slow last two days. Still up 60% compared to last October. Can't argue with that. Glacial improvement. Oh, oh, I like nice, that. Yeah. I like that. I, I don't like it's a glacial improvement, but I like that way of, of stating it. Nice. Sales are pretty good, believe it or not. I do believe it. And I believe you, John. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Give him another shot of whatever he had. Picking up finally. Wow, okay. Things are turning around for everyone. This is great. So he was fantastic. Wow, Thanks that's... for the lucky finds last week. Otherwise, meh. If you ever find Oliver Tractor ephemera, buy it. Huh. How about Oliver Twist ephemera? That's what I tend to find. eBay's service crashed in Salt Lake City and Reno, so there's one reason things are slow. Oh, Oh, their servers. Oh, well, that could be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, there we are. Now, <clears throat> Stephen's jumping the gun on the excuse of the week. <laughs> it looks like that. Um, so my eBay sales are okay. I mean, they're they're okay. I can't I can't complain. Amazon sales are okay. Sales are okay. Um, I definitely do think I did notice this last week, and I'm kind of curious, uh, everybody out there. What is your opinion, and I know Mr. Magazine's opinion, but we'll get it on the record here, um, taking offers on auctions? Well, I'm not a big fan of it, but I have recently done it a couple times just because I, I figured out what the item was worth after the fact. So then I added the offer in and I took the offer. With the we had the yeah. corgi, the corgi said we had a couple of those. I knew what the stuff should be going for, but generally I don't like to take those offers ahead of time if I don't know what the, the item is gonna go for an auction. So yep. See, and I do take that. And I noticed last week when I ha had listed a bunch of stuff and I was into it right, and I was getting a lot of offers on stuff that I just put up. And here's the crazy part: they were offers that were more than what I was asking. Yeah. And I was very happy, you know. But there are things that there's no particular reason they should sell. They're they're one of those, they're extremely long tail items. Yeah. And if I put it up at $32, which I think is a fair price on it, and you're offering yeah. me 40 right after it got listed, and it's some, you know, 1887 invitation to some dance in Baltimore, yeah. nobody else is going to want it. I'm going to take your $40 on that because you, if I don't know, take it, Odds are it's not going for a hundred. Yeah, there's no yeah. reason why it isn't like it was like a famous dance at Abraham Lincoln. It, well, he would have been passed by then, but it wasn't a. It wasn't a. You know, there's right. no reason it's going to go for sure. a lot of money. Somebody just happened to see it and want it, and I'm more right. than happy to have it gone. So I wonder if other people take offers on those. Yeah, I think another thing for me is with all my listings, two hundred thousand listings. If we did that with all auction and all store, I would not know what's what. And obviously, if it's in a store, I'm like, hey, I've had it on for five years. I'm taking the offer. But if it's in auction. I don't know that, and do I want to take this offer one? Maybe it's better than that. Well, can I give you a hint? Sure. When you click on the offer, if it says time left four hours and 17 minutes or four days, four hours, something like that, mm -hmm. that means it's at an auction. If it says good till canceled, mm. then it's at, at a store. Okay. You know what? I'm still not going to do it. So thank you for that. <laughs> thank you for that insight. <laughs> Uh, oh, oh nice. go ahead. Love right. to hear it. We're not in that part of the show, but we will certainly we will we'll have a uh, preview. So go ahead if you want to give that I, to I us. Just no deleted process. a dollar offer on eleven dollar card. Well, you were sitting here, as a matter of fact. Um, now I did sell one item on Viv's Dash Views, two items on Etsy, and one item on PaperGoy.com. Oh, nice. So that's going on a little bit over there. And um, oh, excuse of the week. Why sales are slow now? We have the actual reason there with the servers now that that can't help. Um, but did you know what it did yesterday in Wyoming County? No, oh, a dollar five and a twenty dollar item. That's uh, pretty insulting. Yeah, that is insulting. Sure. I will, yes, it snowed. Wow. So I was driving yesterday in Wyoming County, which is the only reason that I happen to know that. Jeez. So, what was yesterday, October what 17th? Something like that. 18th. 18th, whatever it was. <clears throat> yeah, so we actually got snow. I went to one of my appointments. They weren't ready for me. I was standing on their porch talking to them. And snow is coming down in my hair and sticking in my hair. So, yeah. 
So I think everybody is, uh, you know, people are sliding off the road near Buffalo. Um, it's potentially snowing this weekend. Jeez. So I think people are all, you know what ends up happening every time there's snowstorms, right? People all rush oh. off to the local yeah. store and they buy everything of water, everything of, yeah. you know, we might be locked in for six months. So let's buy yeah. everything a K-Cup's yeah, possible. Then there's craziness on the road. There's cars and piles of cars, lines of cars. They just got to get to the store, get water, get toilet paper. <laughs> They're driving crazy. Like all the accidents, <laughs> all accidents happen in the first day of snow. No matter what, it could be half an inch. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, people were going off the road yesterday in Buffalo. It is very cold. It's yeah. cold in the morning for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Now we got snow, and there's talk there might be snow this weekend. And uh, some of the some of the areas of the southern tier, up in the mountains, there's a chance or the hills, there's a chance to get eight inches of snow up there. So, yep, middle of October snow. So that's the excuse. Everybody's loading up on provisions right now. Offer uh, lowball because they're upset they can't get what they want cheap. Well, actually, you, Mister Magazine, almost proved your um your point a couple of weeks ago. And what was that? You told me when I was in on a Monday morning that um this guy offered me and he offered you a super low and you almost accepted it. I don't know if oh, you remember that or that not. Was distracted? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And so that's Mr. Magazine's theory is that these people put these offers out there figuring eh, somebody might take it. And Mr. Yeah. Magazine almost did take it on a low, very, very low offer of something or other because he was, you know, in the middle of something or other. Yeah, yeah. It was like 35 bucks or something. It was way less. It was less than half or half. half. Well, didn't you almost take one one day where they dropped a number? Like you were asking like 110 and they offered 10. And you almost took it because you, yeah, you yeah. almost saw it as one hundred. Yeah, I mean, a couple times, almost actually, saw it as hundred. A couple times, I actually did take the offers, but just because I wasn't paying attention, it might have been ten for fifty or something, which is not good. But I, I do honor it. I'm not going to be a jerk and not honor, but you know, it does happen. Yeah, hopefully only over. Right. Yeah, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Nice skating, Mr. Ray. Yeah, well, and, uh, we may have, we we may I don't have know, a story. We're going to have a a pre rambling story. <laughs> yes, because today something did happen. I don't think I even told you about it today, did I? Oh, good, good times. All right, so we may have a rambling story. How about any buys? Anybody out there buying anything? Uh, so I talked to Vernon down in Georgia for 18-wheeler number two. And definitely do check that video out if you haven't about the biggest haul we've ever had. So there's 26 pallets left, about 100,000 magazines. And Tractor Trailer 2, which I do have room for at this moment, pulled in this morning. Oh, 13 pallets. Got a call from Vernon at 9 o'clock, said they're already in and on its way. I said, Vern, I love you. I go, <laughs> great job. Keep up the good work. I'll talk oh, to you. Oh, they did wonderful work, Donald. Yeah, they did amazing. wonderful yeah, work. Good stuff. So, yeah, that happened. Um, as far as buys, run, you know, normal stuff, buying toys like crazy right now, stocking and piling on toys. I did look at a toy collection. I think I told you it was a thousand pieces. The guy, in the, he's an older gentleman. His son kind of priced stuff out, which I think he didn't know what he was doing. He priced them out a little too high, didn't factor in condition. Um, I did make him an offer, however, it was half the offer he was thinking of, but um, hopefully we'll go back and forth. It's stuff that certainly will sell regardless for Christmas, but still got to buy it at the right price. So um, sometimes the sellers have to be educated on how to properly value. Well, great. Collection. makes such a yeah, big thing. Absolutely. And I'm going to tell you, great, great makes things tough. I, I prefer yeah. to handle things in VG because there's just no question. I mean, it's VG is VG but, or the uh, rare. Obscure yeah, a lot of stuff. these things were like that. You know, if everything's mint to pristine and unopened and he wanted 10,000. Okay. And I want to offer five, I might go to 7,000, but you know, they're dirty. Some are bowed, the figures and stuff. Well, so but, but here's the thing. If, if, if they're all mint, Unopened, that's one thing. If they're all VG and I understand they're all VG, that's another thing. Right. It's when I'm pricing off of mint prices, not understanding, and you and have I to think sell that's VG, they, that's, that's the issue. problem. Well, and they may not be. Usually, most people do not price their collections off sold prices. They don't go that step further or know how to go that step further. They price it off the asking price, the high price. And I think this kid's younger, and I think that's what he did, even though the father says he didn't. But, you know. And again, if I don't buy the collection, no, you know, I have, you other, don't I have yeah. other stuff. You have a if, tractor trailer yeah. number three coming in. If they, if they find someone else is willing to pay them their 10000 God bless them because I could never make money off that. So. Right. So I ended up buying a few things. Um, did go to an estate sale. I, I'm not going to tell you what I bought because at some point, probably next week, we are going to start doing some YouTube shorts 
Um, I've got to look into exactly how Random Neighborhood Kid helped me load everything on my phone that I need. Um, some neat things that I want to bring you in the shorts format. Uh, because oh, I thought you meant we're going to get advertising on <laughs> under, shorts. underwear on Amazon. That would be there cool. you go. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. Million Dollar Peddler's underwear. Yeah. Um, but all I'm going to say is when you see a sale with stuff that you want, go to it. You may be pleasantly surprised, which I was. Um, I did go to the flea market. I didn't see anything there. I literally bought nothing. There was one book that I could have bought to make money on it, like a early 1900s kids book. They wanted two bucks. Mm -hmm. Could have bought it and sold it eventually for 20 to 25. I just didn't feel like opening my wallet. <laughs> I just like, oh, it's so much work getting my wallet out. So um, so or, or it's so big. Go. It's like George Costanza's wallet. Is that why? <laughs> well, you know, I'd have to write one of those giant checks. That's how I pay everything nowadays. Um, yes. I did see local Joe. Uh, he didn't see me, but he was busy with customers and I didn't really want to bother him, but I kind of waved him as I walked by, even though he didn't see me. So local Joe was there. I did see local Mike and um, want to thank local Mike. He actually hyped our channel up to somebody or other that he knew when I was standing oh, there. Cool. And uh, I ended up getting my business card. So hopefully we, hopefully uh, that gentleman is going to be checking it out. Um, and I'm going to say this, if we ever did a local version of the show, Oh, I think he just left. It had 36, and now we're going to 35. He just ran out, yeah. Uh, if, I ever do a if we ever do a local version of the show, we'll definitely have local Mike in. He goes, hey, just wanted to let you know, for this week, there's a card show at. Syracuse has a show, and so he's going through the entire list of places oh, that I could go buy stuff nice. at. I'm like, good, good. geez, yeah. <laughs> we need that going on over there. So that was uh, that was really good, though. Um, you could do where you can buy things at this week segment. <laughs> So that was really good. I uh, went to a church sale. I, I did pretty good at a church sale as well. You always mm -hmm. wanted to go to that. And um, got a couple of buys. Now, hey oh, Delightful Dawn is in the house. Yes, she is. Uh, give me a bit of warning before you do that. My age, my heart, my heart. Um, coming to join you, Elizabeth. Oh, God. Please, <laughs> take him. Um, You've made a comment in the past that I've got a lot of stuff here. So oh, it hasn't moved. No, that moved because Random Neighborhood could knock that box down today. Yeah. It really did. It's a bench so now. Yeah, the comic box is now a bench. <laughs> um, what is one of the big things? In fact, we've done a uh, show about it, how important networking is. It is very important. Don't network. Don't do it. Here's the problem. I don't need to buy, but I've well, got two different. I got one dealer that just sold me a bunch of stuff. He's going to be sending the stuff out. The price was right. Um, he's going to be sending stuff out to me. I met him at Allentown, gave him my card over there, bought from him there. Yeah. He says, are you interested? Send me some stuff. Give me a good price on stuff. I don't need it. But, and then well, another gentleman that I bought from before just contacted me and said, oh, yeah, I got all this stuff I want to sell. I don't really know what I want out of it, but, yeah, well, give me a, throw me a price. I know it's worth something, and he's going right. to be sending me the stuff. Yeah, I agree because it's been happening with me lately, and I don't want to be a jerk and not talk to these people, but I really don't have time. I get calls now for friends, friends of a friend, or friends selling friends' cards out of state, and I, honestly, I probably get 10 to 20 calls a day now or emails combined with, like, hey, are you buying this, and they're sending me pictures, and, I get home at six, seven o'clock and I'm getting phone calls. I don't know who it is. I'm like, just leave them at. Hopefully if it's important, <laughs> you'll leave them. At. I just, I just get exhausted. And I'm burnt out by it. And I can't buy everything either. And a lot of stuff, you know, you got to weed out some of the lesser stuff, but yeah, it's definitely getting time consuming. Well, but, but here's the crazy thing. And anybody else out there as well is in the same boat. And it kind of ties into our main topic today about the buyer's market. What are you guys doing out there? Cause I'm sure that all of you, have more buying opportunities than you have time to be able to buy yeah, everything and to list everything. It's kind of crazy to say the least. Of course, then I found a book sale to go to tomorrow. So I'm going to go to it at my lunch hour because, and the reason why is because on my way to the estate sale, the way I was going, I drove by and there's a big sign out front book sale, library sale. And I go, mm. Oh, now I know where I'm going next week. So, you know, but at a dollar a book, I'll go through probably pick out five sure. to 10 books that I need and pick some good stuff up out of that. Gonna head on into glitch of the week, and you win this week, Mister Magazine. Oh, I, I, please refresh my memory. Which one was it? Or what is it? What was the problem that you had all weekend along? Oh, that problem. That is glitch of the week. It's still not even like this is rambling it's, glitch it's, of the it's week. It's partially fixed. So we have the shop, and we have internet from Spectrum. Got the router, got the modem, 
And then we also have one in the laundromat, which we got free. It was a, it was some promotion they were running. Do you want a second router and modem? Who was running that promotion? It was Time Warner uh, before Spectrum. That's a problem. Yep. So we got the free router modem with free Wi-Fi for all the laundromat customers. Well, either the cleaning person or one of the customers, they took the signs down that had the username and password. It was some generic Password one, two, three. Whatever it was. So anyways, <laughs> they took it down. We didn't know what it was. And people were asking. So I told my sister, manager, Lori, go, just call up and see what's going on. See if we find out what it is. So she calls up. For whatever reason, they reset something. And then the internet went down. Then they fetched at your store. At the store. Yeah. And luckily, this was a Friday. I think it was a Friday afternoon. Then it came back on. And it was working. And by that time, I had something going on or my kid's game or something. So I left. So it was over and done with. Uh, but she couldn't get back on at some point at 4 o'clock before the end of the day. Um, they had trouble. They talked to someone, some rep. They were going to reset it, blah, 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 blah. Then someone was going to come in the morning. And then they called me. And they said, we can get all the computers going, but this employee's computer, do you care? Because we can just switch the cords out when we need them. I go, fine. Don't, you know, because it was. Now, who was saying this? Uh, one of my nephews. Was okay, a worker so of yours. Yeah. He said, he said, I think we're good to go. We can get everything going on. I said, fine, because it was like $150 because. It's not free if you're using like your own modem and your own router. We had other stuff going on, added in a switcher and so forth. I said, yeah, just cancel it then. Well, I get in the next morning, nothing's working. Nothing at all. You know, everything was working before. Now nothing's working. Um, I got it all working. And then by the time the guy came in that night, late at night, nothing was working. Now, can I ask a question? I'm not done yet. How easy is it to run an internet business without internet? It's very difficult okay. and very frustrating, very <laughs> frustrating. So I got everything rigged where it was kind of working. Everything was, it wasn't a hundred percent, but you know, so now the time, the spectrum guy comes in, he does what he's got to do. He resets this. He changes that. Nothing's working at all. He, he's there two hours. It's like nine o'clock at night on a Saturday oh. or something like that. I'm tired from being there two hours. He's telling me, I don't know what I'm talking about because I had the switcher going and he said, the switch is worth us throw it out. I said, there's 20 cords into this thing. It was doing something for 20 years. What do you mean throw it out? So anyways, make a long story short, I was on Wi-Fi with some old router that I had from that I never used upstairs, and it barely worked because of the distance. So I said, okay, at least I have this. He ends up leaving before fixing everything late at night. And then in the morning I come in, nothing's working again. <laughs> Nothing whatsoever. So then my uh, daddy, who comes in for the laundromat, used to work at Time, Time Warner. Warner. Yep. He goes, well, I mean, I talked to a buddy. Let's do this. Let's try this out. And I actually got a router, a big, a fancy router that covers, all, you know, a football field. I don't know. So we pull, tried hooking it up. That didn't work. It had to be reset from Spectrum. But the router and modem downstairs by all the desks where I need them so, from, I just unplugged them and plugged them back in, and those were working. So right now we have everything working all the listers computers working we don't have enough ports for like say the credit card machine so we'll have to unplug one and plug one in but i need to get an it guy just to clean the mess up and get everything going very frustrating and luckily we really were not down for much business we didn't lose much business at all so that's good there that was rambling glitch of the week and now i have a bigger headache than 10 minutes ago <laughs> a couple of other little things you also had another glitch um, which actually is a, a glitch i guess some other people have had when i was reading on prime times page okay um Live auctions, yep. Yeah, that's true. Um, your return labels. Oh, yes. Yeah, so we finally got that fixed. Yes, for eBay. So we had three returns within three days, and I could not have eBay print the labels and send to the, the buyer. So they want you to go on stamps.com or whatever, purchase yeah. the postage, send it to them and then have them send the stuff back instead of using their yeah, return and I process. Say, I think I did it one time in 20 years just because I had no choice. So I called up three days ago, talked to someone. Yeah, no problem. We'll take care of it. Give us three days. We'll figure it out. And immediately the next day, you know, it's going to the next step. Like if I don't oh, send yeah. a label, they're going to refund them. Then we called again. Oh, yeah, we'll take care of it. All, th all three, we give them all the information. Oh, we're going to take care of it. If you don't hear it from us by Thursday... Let us know. It should be all fixed by then. Get another email saying, hey, now you have 48 hours to figure the, to send the label. And you're talking, you know, a couple hundred bucks for three items. But still, why throw 200 bucks away? Yeah. So my manager called again today. It, it, you must have to have the right guy to talk to that knows what they're doing. 
He said, I don't know why they didn't do it. There's nothing in the system. So everyone we talked to before then did absolutely nothing. He said, give me a minute. And within a minute, I got three emails. He sent the the labels through. It's, it's not crazy. stressful running no, your own business. No, it's, so, it? it's okay. very simple. It's not work. Lucky Lee's in the house. So you search you. Oh, yes. I've yes, that's antiqu antiquarian. I went on e-commerce bites. They're talking about that. You know how when you type something into Google and it says, did you mean, and it goes to the closest yeah. probable thing, but you didn't mean it because you meant it exactly the way. Right, yeah. eBay now in their search is assuming you meant the more probable thing and sending you things on that. Whereas you may want, I mean, in your case, you want uh, gem eater, but most people don't want that. Most people want Demeter. So eBay is assuming you didn't know what you were looking for. And it is a known glitch that they have on there. And people are furious about it because they can't get the things they really want. And they're getting completely covered with emails that, that don't aren't what they want at all. Um, I had a glitch Thursday, which I'm surprised nobody else had out there. So I go on Thursday. Somebody made me an offer of $20 on an item. I said, oh, I can take $20 on it. I click accept offer. It resets to the page. I click accept offer. It resets to the page. I click accept offer. It resets to the page. I did that for about 12 hours. Then I decided this isn't going to work. So I went out to where it says um, offers as opposed to through the messages. I went to the offers. I said, let me try going in a different way. Maybe that'll work. So I clicked in through the offers off the seller hub, clicked on that, clicked accept offer. Went back through to collect uh, accept offer. About 16 hours later of clicking accept offer, it still had not taken it. So what I ended You're up really doing, desperate for 20 bucks. <laughs> I didn't really spend 16 hours. That was comedy. No. Now, what if you like um, countered it like 19.99? I countered it 20. And he, and he I went. literally countered it 20. And I said to the gentleman, eBay is currently having a glitch. I'm more than happy to accept your offer. I have to do it this way. And I didn't know if that was going to work or not because yeah. I could see him having to click through and not being able to accept oh, yeah, it. Sure. He was able to accept on his end, um, so he bought it. And later the day, later that day, offers were working. Um, so no, I didn't really click for sixteen hours. That would be foolish. It was only twelve. Um, we're going to head on into the uh, sweet Santa Rosa Sam's in the go. house. How's it going? Let's see. No internet. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. paging her and Kate. Exactly. <laughs> But no flooding, as far as you know. <laughs> Lovely Linda's in the house. Again, it is a win, I guess. <laughs> sure. like yeah. Going to head on in real quick to the insulting offer of the week. Now, we had a, a dollar five offer, I think somebody was saying on there. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Magazine had two winners this week. I didn't really have any insulting offers, not wow. wood, except in eBay insulting me when I, I let me accept the offer. Um, you had a $96 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle toy. I did, yeah. Somebody offered you $10 on it. I mean, it costs like 50 plus tax in the store. So unless you steal it or get, you know, someone buys it and throws it in the garbage, I mean, you can't get it cheaper than that. And your winner this week was... You had a $182 model. They offered you $25, and their logic was, your shipping is outrageous on it. You use calculated shipping. We do, yes. It's oversized. So, it is oversized, yeah. So the post office is charging you an outrageous amount of money right. to ship it. Yeah. You know, or is, say they're in California, I'm in New York, add that on to the mix. I think he said it was a Jaguar model. It's a big Jaguar model. It's huge. Um it was 150 bucks, and I think shipping was 50 or 60. And I, and I said, even if my employee was an extra pound, he's not going to raise it's the, the size. Dimensions. Yeah, right. But the like, yeah, so like this guy, he was, why just bought one for 20 shipping? Or someone else asked him 20. I, well, they might be asking 250 for the model and 20 shipping. Or I'm asking 150 and 50. But, you know, regardless. Well, they might be asking 20 because they don't use calculated. They right. don't know that the dimensions are a problem. Or they had it listed two and they years listed ago. Two years yeah, ago right. without calculated. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. When it was $20 because they weren't worried about right. it. Yeah. But, and we ended up banning him because he was getting belligerent. Um, 
but basically my last email to them was we're not making any money on the shipping. We're paying fees on the shipping. Right. And you want to offer us $25 on a $182, $185 model. We're going to lose money on the yeah, deal right. if we accept your offer. Yeah. And we're not making the money. I said, right. complain to the postmaster. He's the one that makes the yeah. makes the shipping costs, not us. We have calculated for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> and um gonna head on into item of the week. I believe you oh, have something. I do have an item of the week. Yes. It's very exciting. And thanks to local Mike for having this idea. He, he, local Mike yelled at me at the flea market. He goes, I didn't hear my name when you do item of the week. I go, okay, local Mike, this was your idea. So we picked up that uh, toy model collection with the die cast cars was local. The big warehouse was 5,000 mm -hmm. pieces. And we're going through them. Lots of models, lots of, you know, corgis, hot wheels, unopened stuff. And in the bottom of one box in the corner. Do I even want to know? <laughs> You want to hold on to it? Do I? I don't know. Don't drop oh, it. This don't drop heavy. it. Don't drop it. I'm not dropping. It's okay. heavy. A World War II mortar shell. Oh. And we do not know if it's live or not live. <laughs> well. What it was doing in the box, we don't know. But here it is. And we have to do some research. Hopefully it is not live. I think we can probably figure it out. He said something about drilling holes and keeping his paperweights and stuff. So. We're kind of certain and hoping that it's yeah, it not. Look you know, like it but, is. Uh, <laughs> From what I can tell, if you dropped it and it was live, we could have been in trouble. But uh, very cool. Good content, though. It is very good content. And, yeah, <laughs> like, uh, but what are we going to do for an encore? Remember the uh, Bugs Bunny? Oh, yeah, Duck? yeah. Yeah. But that, again, that, and that always is a fear, too. You you can always find these things out there. People bring things home, brought things home that they shouldn't have had yeah. from the military, from the things that like exact? that. Sure. Um, you just absolutely never know. Um, that's where you buy the collections off the collectors and they know what they're doing on that right. kind of stuff. They're yeah. crazy. Crazy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. What could go I wrong? Have out this window. That would have been great. <laughs> what could go wrong? Yeah, you die for cover. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Three, I could ship a full drum set for 85. Now it's 200. Oh, yeah. No, oh, yeah. oh, definitely. Definitely. Now, well, now I think it costs 85 for a drum stick. <laughs> but enough about price of chicken. Uh, exactly. Customer issues. You, Mr. Magazine, you are you are taking the show away today. So, Mr. Magazine, let me preface this and correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Mr. Magazine sold some adult DVDs uh, off your website, I believe. No, uh, so we sell them off the adult marketplace. Oh, adult marketplace. But this gentleman who was a customer for many years, at least two years, he was buying steadily. Oh, he was longer than that. He it could be longer. longer than that. Um, he used to buy off yeah. the eBay. So he didn't like using that site because he likes to use his PayPal, and you can't use PayPal on adult stuff. So he called us up, and he wanted to get our PayPal information and start buying DVDs this way instead of the adult marketplace okay. and elsewhere. So long story short, he bought a number of DVDs paid for him mr magazine made an error it was four dvds for 100 bucks to put that into perspective yeah, but you made an error right yeah what happened was the gentleman moved and mr magazine used stamps.com in order we, we are not promoted by them but we were more than willing to do so if they want to uh sure. promote our show um sponsor our show but mr magazine had his name and address preloaded in there it came up already uh Mr. Magazine, admittedly, did not check the address, shipped the stuff to the wrong address. Uh, it shows delivered. So somebody in Tennessee, I believe, is the lucky recipient of four free adult DVDs through the mail. How come nobody ever sends me anything cool? Um, so admittedly, an error was made. Yep. The gentleman has sent multiple emails and would I be wrong when I said he was a, a little miffed? You're way what, off. Way off. So I'm going to read this, and I'm going to clean this up as best I can because we have a, a nice... You got the newest one? The no, newest I'm going to read this. Okay. You GD'd... I think I can say the word bastard. Sure, I'm sure. going to. Several of those DVDs were rare as F. I hope you and your manager... 
die early and miserable deaths for the incompetent monsters that you are. I like that was nice compared to the one today. <laughs> that was nice compared to the one today. I when I order a product, I like to get it. I, I will admit that I do like to get my products. However, I, I don't believe I would wish death, and not only death. Early and miserable deaths for being incompetent monsters. You want me to do the new one? If you can clean it up for the air, because we are a family show. Lord, oh, my manager, you are a four-letter S word, a four-letter C word, a mother <laughs> F-ing, C-ing, C-s-ing, W-h-o-r-e, whatever that word spells. You are guilty of egregious negligence and a criminal <laughs> blah 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 you are <laughs> you are a four letter c word for neglecting to address it and for retaining money that is not yours you ought to be shot for your criminal <laughs> insolence and stupidity i hope you die in early and miserable death <coughs> b-i-t-c-h now this was a good customer for many years and there's just four DVDs, and I'm losing the money. Now, we tried to refund him in PayPal, but he put the he dispute put the in. So we were unable to refund because he put a case in. So now we have to wait for the case to close. We're more than willing to try to do it. He's a little <laughs> upset. <laughs> <laughs> but is life not too short for something like this? And not usually. It has happened before. We saw a lot of DVDs, and sometimes I forget to check. And what are the odds that they're moving? Or two guys with the same name, whatever. But not, why not say, hey, can you replace them for me? You know, I mean, if they were that rare for $20, wouldn't someone have bought them before him? I mean, seriously. Yes, he did. Yes. <laughs> See who we're dealing with? I, I called the paper boy because I said, geez, I almost feel like calling the authorities, but he hasn't threatened us per se, just hoping that we die. Right, just hoping. You know, yeah, that, how many times yeah. have I hoped that on you? True. I mean, true. when you get dialed No, to no, it. that's one in the end. <laughs> I'll love one. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, no, no, very a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. There you go. That's the first time. <laughs> Five star review. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's the best. We have an employee at the warehouse. He's really calm, laid back, nice guy, smart kid. And um, everyone wanted to hear part two of the story, that, the one I just read. And I said, please come over. I want you to read it. And the way he said it with his like monotone, it was just, it was dying, dying. <laughs> Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because our address, That's true. Yeah, that's yeah. a very good point. Yep. That's a very good point. Uh yeah. cards. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, again, I like to get what I ordered, but I don't think I would wish horrible quick deaths yeah. on people or deaths on people. Really? Send me send me the uh, link, the million dollar pet. Oh, did I say that out loud? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, that, yeah, that was great. Yeah, <laughs> that super, was great. Super. Uh, <laughs> you should you should send him like uh, replacement DVDs uh, uh, in a completely different genre than what he likes. Oh yeah, and then watch him Flip <laughs> get him set about yeah. some free. Oh, that was great. I don't. We should just have the show now. It's a mic drop. I don't know where we it's can tough, go from there. Tough, tough, um, interesting. Other things. A couple of quick things over there. Did you see where PayPal um, was? They put up that they would fine people twenty five hundred dollars for spreading misinformation. Give me an example of what you would spread as misinformation. They didn't really go into it. I'm thinking maybe with COVID things like that. If you if you're you know let's say I, let's say Holocaust denial things like that. If I put up a website and that kind of thing. But here's the thing: they were going to find twenty five hundred dollars for each instance. So they would take the money out of your account or out yeah. of your bank account. But how would they even know? Like if you said something. I guess, I guess you know, again, if I had a Holocaust denier website or something yeah. like that, th that they would begin to grab money out for every transaction or something or other. I'm not exactly sure. It got a lot of um, blowback. And I love this. They said, oh, that isn't really the policy. That got in there by mistake. Okay. <laughs> Just randomly, yeah. that showed up. <laughs> Obviously, it was thought about. Obviously, it was talked yeah, about. Right. It's not like randomly, you know, some random words just showed up in there. Like, you're going to get fined $2,500 yeah. if you sell baked goods. I mean, somebody was sitting down talking about it and thought it was yeah, a good idea. Yeah. 
So now they're backpedaling on that and say, oh, oh no, 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 that's not what we meant. That's not what we meant because there was Crazy. such blowback. Yeah. Um, that didn't get the adult DVDs of super mad. No, no, no. Yeah, he didn't get them. Yeah, he uh, he he needs them, I think. Oh, that's a whole <laughs> other story. Um, another couple of quick things. I have 24 days of vacation that I have to use by April 1st or I lose them. So wish me luck on digging out of the piles of stuff that are sitting around the house. Maybe I actually can. But then, long story short, I have seven days to use over the following 52 weeks. That's it. Only one, yeah. only seven days of vacation to use, but then I can retire as early as I possibly can. Good for you. So definitely, definitely doing the final countdown on that. Final countdown. I knew he was gonna sing that. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't really a sing. That was kind of I don't know what that was. So you know, I go on Heritage all the time. I have definitely noticed something. And if you go on Heritage, check this out in whatever collectibles you happen to be in. So there were comics and whatever, a given comic was selling for, you know, and, and it's good because they're graded. So you can compare yeah. apples to apples. So a graded 8.0, let's say, was selling for $800 in October of 2021. Okay. $1,200 to $1,400 in March of 2022. Okay. It's back down to the last ones have sold for $800. And I noticed that across three or four different comics. So it looks like if you purchase something on Heritage between March and May of 2022, mm -hmm. you paid at the peak of the market. Hmm. And now it's back down to the prices it was at in October or so. Right. Problem is it's making right. bidding on stuff tough because, and, and it wasn't just one comic. I saw it on multiple comics. In fact, right. as soon as I noticed that on a couple of them, I start looking on all of them Yeah, and it's happening on about 80% of the comics they have up. So prices peaked back in March, April, May on the way down. Now the question comes, how far down is it going to go? Because we're at October of 2021 prices. Right. Is it going to keep going down? Or is it going to stay at the October prices mm. and stay across? And how do I bid on things yeah. right now? Because, you know, these things aren't uncommon. It's not right. like there's the only issue of yeah, them. Yeah, right. You know, they bring up <clears throat> one a month, they come up. Sure. Well, do I want to bid on it now? So what I'm doing now is I'm bidding at like $450, which is way under market yeah, value. Yeah. But I'm saying I don't want to be the guy that buys it at 800 and find no. out I could buy it at 600 in, in a month right. and a half or two months when it comes. Even though up you again. think it'll go back up for the holiday season? I don't know. That's yeah. the whole crazy thing about it. Because again, it definitely did peak on multiple comics. People get money, they buy gifts, and you know, right. I don't know. <laughs> we are one of a kind when it comes to that. <laughs> yep. And if you want to see more of this amazing content, hit the like button. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so. Uh, oh, and another thing, too, if you sell on whatnot or uh, try to um, check your auctions, go back prior auctions, make sure you got paid for everything. Um, I had seen where I did not get paid for a couple of things. It said it was pending delivery. But then when I clicked on the tracking number, it showed delivered. So I had to reach out to them and tell them about it. And they said, oh, yeah, something wasn't linked up right. And they released the funds. And then about a week later. Prime time over on his whatnot thing said, make sure that you do this. And I go, hey, I'm way ahead of you. I did that already. Um, and then I went through yesterday every auction that I had, and I had a couple of things that it said payment was still processing. So I let them know, and then they looked into it and said, no, 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 you got paid. I clicked through, and sure enough, I did. It just wasn't um, a big amount. Well, hey, it wasn't a big amount, but it also wasn't showing up right on the screen. So definitely do check your past auctions. Make sure that you did get paid because there is a glitch. Very cool. Oh, nice. Nice, 150 bucks. Nice. Um, so do check that. Um, oh, and then you actually are going to be saving me some money. I am. So we've been buying supplies on eBay for how many years? Ever. And there's a local company that they do bubble wrap and bubble mailers. We've been using them for years as, as well. And then um, someone came in that um, I deal I deal with comics with them, and they said, oh, "I'm shipping some comics out. I use this company." Bellinger, I'll give them a little hope there. They do not promote us or sponsor us, but if they would like to. He goes, oh, yeah, I use Bellinger for the, the pads that I ship, you know, boxes and so forth. They go, really? I go, I didn't know they sell them. I've been dealing, dealing with them in years. Why wouldn't they tell me? They know my business, you know. And I said, oh, I just thought they did bubble wrap and bubble mail. He goes, oh, no, they don't know. So 
we put an order in for the the pads, all different sizes, the inserts, cardboard, and how much cheaper? It's like seventy five percent cheaper. It's roughly it's, half price, and you don't pay shipping. Yeah, uh, is what it comes down to. So definitely do check your local area uh, around you. Uh, you may have somebody over there that's going to make a huge difference in savings. Not that I go through a lot of them, but I probably, you know, I buy three hundred pads at a time of the one size, and I probably buy ten orders a year. Yeah. So all of a sudden, I think I ran the numbers. It's going to save me three hundred bucks if I buy other sizes. It'll probably save well, me five, six hundred bucks. Even their tape is half the price, and the rolls are twice as long. So if you need tape, you should get them from them, get too. them too. Yeah, I mean, case will oh. last you forever. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Awesome, Don. Thank you. Oh, I'll try not to. <laughs> I'll buy some extra uh, padding for the the little case the bomb is. In. Or if we do, we could buy band aids now. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Don. You, don't, you really that. don't have to do that, but thank you very much. I definitely do appreciate that. A um, couple of other quick things before we get into the main topic. I have definitely noticed lately um, on Primetime's Whatnot uh, group, there are a lot of people getting disgruntled, um, I, I guess, with, with Whatnot. Okay. Just in general, I think sales have slowed down some. Mm-hmm. And it, it certainly is not for everybody. It's really not for right. everybody. Um, but you, I think you like it or you don't. You think it works for you or you don't think you like it. And, you know, that's how it is for me. Well, it's one of two ways. Either either you think it works for you or you enjoy it, the camaraderie right. and that. And you get, yeah. you know, you get positive feelings out of that. And it is maybe not necessarily about the money. Right. On that, you know, obviously you're making some sure. money, but you're, you know. There are people that have it, and there are people that do it on Facebook. They they have their auctions, and they're they're almost like coffee chats, is what they are. They sit there, and they talk to some yeah. people, show up, they put an item off. They right. fifteen minutes later, they end the item, and they sold it for twelve dollars. They're not making any money, but they're getting together with yeah. their friends every day, type deal. Sure. Um, but I have noticed more and more people on there uh, mentioning that I'm going to be quitting it. It's just not for me. It just isn't working. The buying or the selling? Or both? All the sellers. Sellers, yeah. okay. Oh, the buyers are doing wonderfully. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but all the sellers are definitely, um, not all, but a lot of them are, are less than happy with, with the results of it. Um, so just kind of wondering if other people out there, I know Michelle sells on her. I know a lot of other people sell on her. Wondering if you're sticking with it, if you if you still like it or, excuse me, or not. Uh, Cersei, ninety percent, ninety percent. Well, yeah, that definitely. I do. I definitely do that. You, yeah. you, you don't do it as much, but that's more yeah. because of a manager. Manager and you know, room too. Though a lot of times we get boxes built up and the, they go into the loft, and before you know it, the whole loft is filled up, and we don't want to walk up there and it's just wasted room. So yeah. See now, I'll I'll give an example. Yesterday on um, whatnot, it was all ephemera. I had about I had seventy five percent sell through. I was very happy with that. Um, mm. I think most people I had was 11. Generally, seven people were in there regularly um, mm -hmm. at a time. One of the better shows that I had, just because they were all talking to me, I was talking to them. It was just a yeah. fun little day. You know, chat was going good and all yeah. that. The worst is when you're up there and it's, you know, crickets and you're like, yeah. Did anybody hear me? Is this is this thing on? Is this thing on? But it was actually a fun little show. And and that's kind of, if, if that's what you expect on whatnot, I think you'll do, you'll be happy with it. Cause you build it up and you get the same people coming and you yeah. talk with them. Um, how about the uh, roadmaps? You were going to do those. I got a bunch of them. I just picked up for like, uh, nothing. I did actually sell some roadmaps yesterday. Yep. Want, I'll set them yep. for you. Perfect. Go through growing pains, but right now most of the buyers are other resellers. Yes, that is absolutely true. Absolutely true on that. No doubt at all about that. Um, you can't be spending gas money driving around for a little, no return. Yeah, no, that's true. True. These whatnot for clearance for now, but building my followers, hoping eventually a lot more buyers around. Made 120 of stuff over throwing away today. Yeah, cool. that's exactly. If you go in with that mindset, and I think a lot of people are going in with the, this money is going to replace my eBay money. Mm -hmm. and if you're going into it with that, unless you know, I could do that if I wanted to wholesale everything out of my house. Yeah. In you know, I'm moving to a different state and I want everything out of here. Well, then it's a good place yeah. to get it because let me ask you this. If I took leave my collectibles out of it, if I took all this unlisted stuff, mm -hmm. what are you going to give me? You're going to give me pennies on a dollar because you don't need it either. Right, right. Um, so if if you want to do that, you could do well on her sure. as well. Yeah. Um, on that, if you need the room, like I did with the container. Yes, I you know I sold it for probably pennies on a dollar, really for what the retail and yeah. But I'm gaining value that's ten times that value. You yep. know, in in the container, you're trading up yeah, essentially. Right. Yeah, right. Yep. Absolutely. And they had no other option, really, for the most part. 
Yep, exactly, exactly. And that's the way I'm looking at it as well. If you're on there now, I'll just throw a date out. Two years from now, a lot of other people discover it and come on to it. Who are they going to shop mm. on? Well, they're going to shop on somebody or other that is established. And, oh, this person's made 4,000 sales. Yeah, and is, you know, 4.99% positive. Yeah, I think I can trust this person. So I think that's kind of what you're building up on there on that site for for the long run. I didn't, I didn't know what that was the main topic. That's no, interesting. Oh, we're not there yet. We're not I'm there. Sorry. Did you notice I was walking like a hundred year old man on Monday? No. Oh, uh, I hurt my back over the weekend. I ended up canceling my Facebook auction on Monday. Um, just one of those one of those things over there. But I will be having a Facebook auction this coming Monday. Oh, nice. uh, glad you pay attention when I'm walking around like oh, yeah. like I have scoliosis. Maybe if you were a female, I would watch the way you walk, but you're not. I am not. No, that is absolutely true. Uh, focused on sourcing percentage wise. Um. You you actually can answer that. I mean, I get a lot of people coming in. I, you know, but I don't know percentage wise how much of my day. Ten um, percent. I was going to guess ten percent. See, and mine is zero 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 twenty five. You know, in other words, like yeah. tomorrow, and I'm going to keep my day job out of tomorrow because yeah. obviously that out of the time that I work tomorrow on my business because yeah. I'm going to go to that library sale. It yeah. might be 20% of my day is spent, sort of my eBay yeah. workday is spent sourcing tomorrow. But I did I did a little bit today because I, I um, looked at a couple of pictures from somebody and bought something. But the right. day before, I did absolutely nothing. Yeah, yeah. So mine tends to run in spurs, but that's because I have to work around the day job. If I didn't have the day job, I yeah. probably would be, oh, I'm going to go to this estate sale. Or I'm going to do this. Yeah. It'll probably be we a had a higher. Saturday a couple of weeks ago where I felt I was like pawn stars. There was like people waiting in line. It was literally, you know, I'm there from 11 till 2. Two hours was just dealing with people one after the other. It doesn't happen very often, but, you know, it was kind of cool, though. A couple of other things. Hey, I am no longer in trouble on Amazon. Good for you. I, still I am not at risk. Um, and that's for the now. crazy thing about for it. Now. Don't buy it. Oh, very good. Well, yeah, you bought for me. Exactly. Uh, which you all should do as well. Paper going on whatnot. Tuesday ephemera auctions at 4 p.m. And Thursday comic auctions at 4 p.m. All times Eastern. Um, but yeah, I, I had a, a, some problems that dropped off six months. Oh, yeah. They were on. They dropped off. Now I'm not at risk. And of course, you're waiting for the next shoe to drop for the next pricing you know, error. And not for nothing. Problem. I've said this before. At one point, a couple of years, we had 10,000 violations and we were not at risk. And say then we, then the, Tighten, you know, the grip. We're at eight thousand. We're at risk. Then we're at two thousand. We're at risk. Then we're one thousand. We're at eighty. We have eighty violations, which is uh, nothing. And you're increasing your rights. Yeah, and we have three hundred over three hundred ten thousand in in the big ones, the intellectual property rights. Then went down to zero. That's like they said. That's the most important one. And then the violations for the adult stuff, which we had eight thousand adult violations a year or two ago. Now we have like forty. And we're still in violation. I'm like, I don't, I can't believe. I should have took a picture because they, they probably don't, they probably don't have that information, right. you know. But that's crazy. And a negative dropped off on eBay. I'm at a hundred percent. Knock on nice. wood. Yeah. We are heading into the holiday season. All yeah. set. All right. Mighty Memphis is in the house. I'm sorry, no. Memphis. We we were you, waiting. You missed a lot. Could. You missed a doozy. Yeah. Actually, yeah. You <laughs> definitely do want to watch this on the replay. It's been a crazy <laughs> show to say the least. One of our one of our fun ones. Now we're going to head on in. Memphis, you came in just in time to head into the main topic. Dealing with a buyer's market. And I think it most definitely is a buyer's market right now. As I mentioned even earlier in the show, um, I don't need to buy. And because of the networking, I mm -hmm. just bought stuff today from somebody I met at Allentown. Had I not gone to Allentown, Right. I never would have met this person sure. had I not given him my business card. Had I not, had I not, well, I did. Now I've got some good yeah. stuff coming in the mail, which yeah. I don't need right now. Um, I just think that things are going to, and, and I know that that's one thing that people are saying about whatnot is sales are down because again, as everybody uh, readily admits, it's primarily other resellers currently buying. Right. If hmm. every reseller is stocked to the gills, can't get everything listed and sold that they currently have, right. you are stocked to the gills. 
so what are you going to do given that it's turning into a buyer's market as opposed to a seller's market well, at this point? For starters, I'm so loaded. I've bought so many big collections. There's still the two in the works. We got the Connecticut deal. Of course he, there are. The Connecticut guy's still calling me. He wants to work a deal for 70, 80,000, which I don't have the time or the room right now. And it's not a deal that you know me, I would jump on it. So if it's there in a month or whatever, if I get some extra money or he wants to give me what I want as far as the deal goes, fine. We got the Disney deal. Haven't called the guy back. I don't think it's going anywhere for the amount of money he wants. And I have this attitude where if someone's willing to pay more than my offer, good for them. God bless them. Because then they need money. They need room. They need time. Whatever. But there are exceptions. And on, let's say on a smaller deal, for example, and I told you that lady that came in, she went to three shops, sports card shops before me, and her father's giving her his cards from his collection because she wants to start up some business on her own. And she had 1969 Tots basketball set, the Lou Alcindor rookie, and it was high grade. And um, she said, I went everywhere. They were lowballing me. And I looked them up, and they're going for 2000 to 2500 maybe 3000 in higher grade condition, which hers I certainly think would grade six or sevens, you know. So I offered her 1000 She was well, you're almost there, but you're st- and you offered double what someone else did. So one dealer, so it's a buyer's market, but. Can you, can you still insult someone and offer 500 on it? They're hoping, I guess so. But now you lose the deal. So instead of making some, say say she would have taken 1,000, you offered 1,000, you can make 1,000. Instead, you're making nothing because you wanted to steal an insult. I guess not, 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 that, not that, of course, that you want to come in insulting. You don't, wanna, you don't want them to have their show where they talk about the insulting offer right. of the week. But you have to be very particular. Now, that happens to be, if not, if not gold, certainly a precious metal of some sort right it's not like you're buying lead right in that case over there so that is something good but now if she had come in and she had a hundred and fifty thousand 1988 fleer commons yeah i'm not buying it for free if it's free because i have nowhere to put it if you did buy it you're buying it looking going well he's coming these uh these come in the monster boxes i'll I'll get your your butt over and pick these boxes up I need the monster boxes and there's $12 oh, worth the monster yeah, boxes. All right, I can buy them and throw all the cards away. Yeah. You know, in that case, not that you want to insult anybody, right. but you would be willing to say, look, I'll, I'll give you a hundred bucks for them all. Just right. be, and, and that's because the supplies are worth sure. that as opposed to but, anything um, else. So she said, so we, I said, how about 1200? She was, she was thinking about it. She was, I really need to get 15. She was, how about if I had a second set and who has two high grade sets? She was, and you pick out the best cards of each out of the set. Would you do 1500? I go, sure, why not? Because I've dealt with the Lou Alcindor. We gra- had one graded a six and one for 3000 I go, that one's at least that. So in my head, I'm already going to, less the grading, I will double my money just off the one card or sell the set as a high-grade set for maybe 4000 So I offered her 1500 We She had a bunch of other stuff I bought. She said, you know what? You're the, the nicest one I've seen out of them all, the fairest. Um, you're honest. I printed out some comps and I showed her. I go, this is where I'm at. I do this all the time. So, and that's how you get repeat business people selling to me you know so it was a good feeling it was a good deal but again you know the other dealers were offering insulting offers to them and they're not, you know and maybe if they don't know what they're doing they would take it you know well with the other so, side of it is you wonder if those dealers aren't uh, they could be struggling yeah hey my sales are done on ebay i don't no. have this extra thousand dollars of mad money to buy and i don't want to invest this and then you know, it doesn't sell or I can't get enough money to make a profit or do I want to spend money grading them? So, and by the way, I did send out the top five cards that get graded. So hopefully they'll be back in a month. Well, and that raises the other side of the flip side of that, which I want to, I want to get your opinion on Mr. Magazine. You're, should you take lower offers on stuff right now? And the reason I'm asking that Mm -hmm. is remember it cuts both ways. Correct. The, if you can buy a ton, probably your buyers potentially can buy a ton if they're at all hustling yeah, out, they're trying right. to get things. You know, sure. obviously, if you're just a, a collector on the side, you got a day job, right. and you just go on eBay and it's the only place you go. Yeah. You know, that's another thing. But if you're out there hustling, trying to find stuff, things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm definitely taking low offers on certain things. I'm being selective. I don't, again, I don't want to, I don't like setting precedents where. You know, if this guy's buying $25 Don Manley cars from me for $10 or $12, I don't want to do that because then I'm going to get those all the time and I don't want to keep selling. So certain things, 
if it's a Time magazine, if they're records, if there's things I could give a crap less about, I don't mind doing that, you know. Um, and we and it's funny that we were talking about that one deal. The guy made me an offer, seventy-five magazines on the adult site for twelve hundred dollars, and it would have been like thirty-five percent off. And I offered twenty-five percent. And I was thinking about it. I email paper boy, and halfway through the email, I send it anyways. I'm like, I'm just taking it. I go because what did I pay for these things? If I pay two dollars a piece or three dollars a piece, I'm making a thousand dollars, you know. Yeah, but I don't like discounted stuff. But then again. I have a whole container full of more of it. I have a garage full of more of it. You know, we have more Time magazines. We have more of this, you know. So, yeah, I'm definitely taking less offers on most things. Now, on, on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the new toy, no, I'm not. No, that. right, right, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Obviously not. No, but, yeah, no. certain things, you know, my photos, I'm asking 20 I'll take $10. I paid a dollar. So, and I still have 20,000 more photos or 50,000. So, I mean, yeah, I definitely will start taking more. Right. And, and I think that that's something that people don't necessarily think about all the time as well, is that it does mm -hmm. cut both ways. Yeah. And if it's easy for you to buy and you're talking to other people out there and it's easy for them to buy, it's yeah. probably easy for everybody to buy right sure. now. Yeah. Um, whatever the reason is, whether it's because some people are getting older and downsizing, whether it's because some people are struggling and yeah. absolutely need to sell stuff in order to, to pay yeah. the bills, whatever the reason is, there's a, a plethora of stuff out there, whether it's people passing on and they're not having been a lot of sales for a couple of years. <clears throat> and now people are saying, you know, I've got my mom's stuff in storage. I just need to get rid of this stuff. Right. We have to do something or other with it. Yep. Whatever the case happens to be, there seems to be a lot of stuff hitting the market all at once. Right. And part of it as well is the fact that as all of us in the reselling business get better, pass the business card out more, talk more, whatever, yeah. more and more people call you because you got a lot more people out there, you know, hitting the pavement for you as well. Um, so, so buying yeah. is super easy right now. Yeah. Right. When I don't need to do it. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm being as selective as I can or offering less just because I'm either saying, no, I don't want to deal with it or I'll deal with it, but I really don't want to pay a lot for it. And that's yeah. what it comes down to as well. Yeah. If um, it's a 69 set, I'm going to step up because I yeah. know I can make good money on that. Yeah, right. So. And that, and that's obviously so. I mean, obviously, the gold you're going to end up paying on, uh, no doubt at all about it. And, and well, you should. And you always are going to have to sure. on that. You know, every once in a while, you might, you might lock into some deal. Yeah. But otherwise, yeah, you're, you're, you're going to pay up on the good stuff. But then the question comes, you know. I'm at the flea market and somebody's got a big box of stuff and they're like, yeah, give me 50 bucks for it. And I'm looking <laughs> right. at it going, do yeah, I exactly. really even want to put $50 yeah. into it? I don't know. I mean, right. I know it's a great deal. I know it's a thousand dollars worth of stuff, Yeah. but am I ever going to list it? Right. What am I going to do with it? Or yeah. am I literally just bringing this home? Did you notice my vehicle? It was a little dark out. So no, don't tell me those bats are still in the back. Everything is still in there. Oh, I nice. have moved literally nothing out of the yeah, vehicle in the a, last It's a week. nice storage facility and a gas guzzler. <laughs> All right. Good for you. Jeez. So I don't need to buy anything. Is my entire, I've been driving stuff around in the snow. Through nice. the, it's getting nice. a nice view oh, of the county. Oh, that's good. Though. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's weighting the car down, though, so it's true. not yeah, sliding yeah. off the road. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm leaving ruts in the pavement where I drive yeah. places. It's so heavy. But yeah, what are you going to do? You just don't want to upset uh, Mrs. Papergoy with the uh, putting it in their living room with that other stuff. Anywho, uh, I see a lot of people have been talking in here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Super Sweetwater's in the house. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate Definitely that. do appreciate that. That yeah. does mean a lot to us. And That's uh, my favorite channel, too, in case you're wondering. <laughs> One thing that we try to do, and we definitely did it today with a couple of the live shows as well, is we try to we try to touch on topics that necessarily other people aren't necessarily talking about. That didn't make any sense whatsoever. We're trying. I wasn't to listening, so thank God. <laughs> I wasn't reading. It's good time to sell it out. Um, but like the one yesterday, um, I definitely thought was a was a, a really good one. There, we try to give some inspirational ones from time to time as well. Uh, we try to look at the bigger business picture and we also mm -hmm. try to give some inspirational ones. Yeah. So I, I think that that's really, really important because uh, yesterday was absolutely the one that we did where we were talking about how a couple of different people thanked us because resellers do yeah. a vital, you know, sure. good work. Yeah. We help people get rid of things that they don't know what to do and they would just throw them out and now they're actually getting some money for them. Right. Yeah. And they're happy with that. And we're happy obviously buying the things to make the money on sure. it as well. So it's a win-win for everybody. So definitely do watch that video from yesterday if you haven't already. Uh, fairly uplifting, I think. And I, I think it's a good video myself. Oh, hello, Don. How's, how's it going? 
Right. Saw him on a milk carton the other day. Mighty Memphis. There you go. See, yeah. well, the only my one. box truck for about a year was a storage unit, and we finally cleared it out and threw a bunch of crap out just so now we need more room to transport stuff to a U-Haul storage facility, the largest one they have. I just rented one. Hopefully it's temporary, but we don't know what's going to happen when the uh, 18 wheeler number three strolls in. <laughs> At least you're preparing for it. Though. Exactly. That's the whole thing. Yeah, you, you really need to buy more because given it's a buyer's market and you yeah. got three 18 wheelers worth of stuff. And not enough employees, yeah. <laughs> so hopefully that does help you a little bit there. So I guess it's, it comes down to be more selective. Realize it's a buyer's market for everybody. So you may have to lower your expectations on the sales end of things. But I guess the other way to look at it is if you're paying a dollar and you're asking 20 and somebody's willing to give you 10 and take stuff in volume, you're still making money. I think that's kind of what you yeah. need to remember on that. Yeah. And it's not like you can't replace that stuff with other stuff. Now, obviously, top of the line stuff, don't do that with. But yeah. the run in the mill stuff, moving on out, there's always going to be more to buy. And if there's not, I got 40,000 backup items to list, and I'm sure you all do as well. Um, you go. wish you only had 40,000. Well, I got to take it today. Got to take you it. Go. All right. So I will not disappoint. Hold but, on. Oh. Rambling story of the week. Got to give it the proper introduction. Go so ahead. I woke up this morning all happy. Guess what was going to happen? The basement was going to be finished today. Nice. Wayne's coating, baseboards. Is day two or three is going to be done today. So I called up paper guy. I said, I have this great idea. When it's all done tonight, why don't I take pictures or video, have my son video the whole basement from start to finish and just put the video up on the site and all the subscribers can see what all the fuss was about from here and there and what it looks like and all oh, was worth the trouble, this and that. And I said, Mr. Magazine's taking an interest in the channel. going to be doing this. This is wonderful. It's going to be great. going to be great. Well, I get a call from the ba the guys putting the wings coating and baseboards in, or a text. It was, I think it was a text. Now, I'm going to backtrack to last week when, or the week before, where there was water coming in through the roof. It was going into the electrical panel, the panel box, and we had guys. That sounds almost as dangerous as having live artillery. Exactly. So the roofer looked at it, the landscaper looked at it, the basement guy, they did this and they did that. Everything was fixed. It rained yesterday. I looked in the panel box. It was dry. Nice. His That's text his text reads, you know you have water in the box in the, the workout room. And that's the room where the panel box had the water. I said, are you kidding me? So now I'm texting. Now, did you really say, are you kidding me? Or did you throw No. It? Did you sound like you got the wrong I, DVDs? I said, you well, didn't get DVDs in the mail? No. I said, well, I'll have to make a couple calls. So I call the basement guy. I call the roofing guy. They're all going to come down and do this and do that. To make a long story short... It was not that panel box. There's a, a PVC pipe from the toilet. I don't know what it does, but it's boxed in, and it had a little crack into it. Okay. So luckily, it had nothing to do with anything else. It was an easy fix because our friend was there with the big beard. He took yeah. care of it today. But that's the whole thing where water is finding a way into my house no matter what. It can't come in from the ground. It tried coming in from the roof. We stopped that. Now it's finding a way into the pipe. It's like final destination of water. It's finding its way no matter what. So we finally got that fixed. Hopefully, I hate water. I wish there weren't any. Exactly. So hopefully it'll be done. It was going to be painted, so it'll be done this weekend. So and that, and that's, I hope that is that. I hope that is it. It's, so sometime soon we will have some exactly. wonderful videos of the exactly. finished basement. Exactly. <laughs> But until then, I'm making sure there's no water for at least 72 hours. I think that's fair. I think that's yeah. a, a fair thing. But we can even go seven days until next Wednesday. How about we promise? True. Very <laughs> true. Yeah. Very true. I'm king of the world. Yeah, exactly. How about we promise a video of your basement done yep. May 1st? Okay. Because that's after the snow, oh, which has true. started already. Yeah, yeah. It'll be after the spring thaw. Mm -hmm. If there's going to be any problems, okay. You are really milking this basement for the rambling story. Over. Yeah, I've never seen anything like it. You know, not, I'm not one to talk. You know, it's giving me something to talk about. You know, I got 17 stories backed and, up. These over are here. true stories. These are live, true events. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, everybody, if you could do us a big favor and hit the like button, we definitely would appreciate that. Uh, wow. Uh, 
fun show today. Uh, I don't know what to say after that story. That's a crazy yeah, story right crazy. there. It is crazy. Um, do watch this on the replay. It's a yeah. lot of, this was it's actually fun, a really right? fun story, a fun show today. Um, do hit the like button if you could. Uh, tomorrow, four o'clock Eastern, we have the What Not comic book auction. Everything mm -hmm. starts at $5. All right. Uh, Tuesday, the following Tuesday, trade cards. Ooh, nice. Victorian trade cards. Mr. Magazine right. was nice enough to provide. So we will see how that goes. I will unveil it next week, Wednesday. We'll find out how that show ended up going. Definitely do stop by. I will have on Monday a Facebook auction at 4 o'clock Eastern. Should be some neat stuff over there as well. And uh, we got videos Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Next week, I'm going to work on the uh, starting to do the shorts. Those should be fun. Okay. And May, we're going to have the video of your basement. Hopefully. Yeah, let's we'll see. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, that is true. 17, it seems like it was 17 years for sure. Yeah. It was drier 17 years ago. <laughs> that is true. Jeez. So, oh, it's a lot of fun. It's a <laughs> lot of fun. You know what you should do? What's that? You should look into underground storage for all of your uh, magazines yeah. and oh, stuff. Yeah. What could oh, possibly yeah. go wrong? Great. <laughs> what could possibly Super. go wrong? It'd be like Al Capone's vault. <laughs> It'd be nice. wonderful. The nice thing, though, is when you go down to the basement, you just pick the magazines off the top when they're floating and yeah. list those. Yeah, it's easy, it's easy to wonderful. pull them. Yeah, you just got to find them on the top. Just make sure you bag everything first. Yeah. All right, everybody. That was a really fun show tonight. Hopefully you liked it. Uh, do hit the like button if you did. Do hit the like button even if you didn't. It tricks YouTube. And we will see you next video. Take care. Bye-bye.